My name is um, Almina Mason first. Um, I live here in Little Eagle, South Dakota. And I was born here in Little Eagle, uh, five miles east of um, Little Eagle, way out in the country. I was born out there and I grew up out in the country at the same place. And uh, so I grew up, and then my grandfather is um, Lala Good Dog, uh, and um, uh, Noah um, shoots walking, and uh, the the my grandfather that I really I really um, remembered and uh, loved was my grandpa Charlie taken alive. And uh, so I had grandfathers and grandmothers that looked after me when I was small. And my Indian name is Kasnas Nawi. Uh, my grandmother Fanny named, gave me that Indian name when I was a little girl. I think I was about four years old and she gave me that Indian name. And I, so I grew up with my, my uh, grandparents um, and I speak Lakota. I never forget my language, my Lakota language, because um, I have been taught every day by my grandparents. And uh, they, they asked, they told me to keep my language as I grew up older so I can teach my children and my grandchildren and uh, I was taught a lot of things as I grew up and as of today um, I'm really happy to learn from my grandparents I, that I have cherished in my heart that, uh, that I teach whatever I, they taught me um, I'm passing it on to my children and my grandchildren and my friends and I, uh, I really um, love to love to tell anything that I I have learned when I was small I can teach any children or anyone that wants to know the Lakota ways of living and uh, so that's, um, that's and then um, after I grew up and then I moved to uh, Cheyenne River I lived in uh, Whitehorse uh, in 1963 I moved to Whitehorse with my parents um, as um, they were um, my my father was an Episcopal minister, so I they were we all moved to Whitehorse, and then from then on, I um, found my husband there in Whitehorse. Then I think it's 1963. Uh, I got married in Whitehorse, and I lived there. And my my. Uh, parents moved on to Rosebud Reservation, but I just lived in a white horse. Well, during that time I lived in White Horse, I um, become, my husband and I found, well, we were going to church and uh, helping out in the church, whatever, and uh, as, as I, as we lived there, uh, 
uh, we start to go into sweats, uh, inipi, and um, inika kapi, uh, inipi. And uh, my husband and I um, think we found our, our way to, to our own religion, our own culture of uh, sweat, uh, inipi, and um, sun dance and ceremonies that we, we uh, it seemed like we found our own red road. And uh, my husband really enjoyed uh, going into Inipi and having ceremonies, and uh, he loves to go to sun dances. So as we, as we, um, take part in those, we learn, we learn from them. We learn from the, our own culture. And um, then we, uh, we showed our, we uh, had a family, then we started a family then in 64, 65, 1965. And as I, our children grow well, were grown up. Well, we we told them what we do, and and they started to join us, and we all, my whole family, really enjoys uh, Inipi ceremonies and sun dancing. All of us, the whole family. It's a it's a family circle that we all hang we all stand together and pray together in Lakota way, and uh, and that was really good. We have friends from all over that come to Whitehorse and will camp around our our home and uh, do the same thing too. And, uh, it was really nice. And uh, in Whitehorse, uh, there was uh, there's a hill uh, right uh, north of Whitehorse community. And uh, when you climb up that hill, there's a little cemetery up there. And uh, so we, my husband and I, walked up there in 1963, and we found uh, a grave of our of a chief. And his name was Chief Whitehorse, and we were really stung about 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 the chief buried there, and nobody seemed to care. Um, there was no honor or respect uh, uh, for the Chief Whitehorse um, during the years, the past years seem like they should have a honoring day for him. And uh, my husband talked about it to the community, the people of uh, Whitehorse, and uh, and they don't seem to, uh, well, they thought about it, but they didn't seem to uh, care. So then my husband and I used to um, have Indian um, Lakota food uh, papa soup and wajapi and fried bread, or even a papa wasna. And we used to take it up there at his grave, grave site and leave it up there. We used to say a little prayer and we used to visit up there for a while and then we used to come back down. And uh, I know. Um, and then my children, we we uh, showed my children, so they used to go up there and pay a visit to. They used to say Lala, Chief Whitehorse. You know, they call him Lala. And uh, that was really an honor to find out there was a chief, chief buried up there, Chief Whitehorse. It was um, uh, really something to think about. And, uh, and uh, while well, my husband and I talked about, you know, they used to have a little powwow there, 
uh, in Whitehorse, and it still goes on. They just had one um, uh, last month in May. So um, my husband said, well, we'll get ready in one of these um, powwows. We'll honor our chief, Chief Whitehorse. And that was really, you know, something to look forward to. Uh, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen that my husband passed away in 1980, 87. So it didn't happen what we planned to do. But uh, that was, it was really um, an honor to find out that there was a chief white horse up there and then the white horse community was named you know after the chief too so it was a really honoring uh, community to me you know uh, and <clears throat> so I um, about a year ago we went we went to white horse and I went back up there we uh, drove up there to pay a visit on, on his uh, grave, but uh, I was really thankful that somebody, you know, somebody um, fixed the grave up in it, but it really looked nice. Uh, it, it was uh, really good to see that. Um, so as we lived in Whitehorse, um, I was married into a big family. Uh, my husband had a big family. He had grandmothers, mother and father, and grandmothers and grandfathers. And um, one of my mother-in-law, Annie Fasthorse, she lived to be 105 years old. And uh, we lived beside her. And um, she was she was she is a really uh, respectful woman um, if you go to her home she'll invite you in and she'll take you to her table right away and she'll give you coffee and uh, start cooking or if she has food she'll set the table right away plates put plates on the table for you to eat right away and uh, she was, um, she, she's the kind that really um, take, um, she really takes time with children. She talks, she talks her language, you know, so she talked to them in Lakota way and Lakota, speaking Lakota all the time. Uh, and then my other mother-in-law, she lived to be um, 80, 88 years old. And that, that was her sister. And uh, her name is Jenny, makes him first. And she was really traditional too. Everything was, whatever she does and um, fixes, even food, you know, it's all traditional. They were, I always talk about them because they were just humble. They're really humble persons. They have that respect. You never hear them, you know, this, or they're never, it seemed like they're never disappointed in anything. You know, they just go on with their days and they make, uh, they make people happy, you know, the way they treat people. Uh, it seemed like, uh, they got no worries or anything, you know, that's, but they were, they're always happy. And they have visitors all the time. They have company every day. And, and then my, um, my husband's um, mother and father, the mother, uh, the father passed away when um, my husband was only two years old. And uh, so he grew up without, without a father, but he had uncles that helped him along. And uh, his mother, 
he I think he um his mother passed away when he, he was about 15 16 15 or 16 his mother passed away so he relied on his grand grand uh, the unjis and lalas you know that's what he used to say Whenever he's hungry or he needs something, you know, he turns to them and they, they all help him along. And, uh, that's how he grew up. And his aunt raised him too, but at the age of 20, 26, uh, the, his aunt passed away too. So. But that was... Um, and that was really amazing to be um to me it was an honor to be with those um my my in laws and they were uh, elders elderly but they they really get along get around too <laughs> i was uh young at that time but they they did more things than i i i do you know during the day. And I, I just couldn't believe it. You know, they haul wood. They, they wear aprons. They haul wood, and they take it back in the house, and they just go back and forth. You know, like uh, they wear long dresses. They got long braids, and they, they really look nice. And now. Uh, and then my, the one that lived 105 years old, she never took an aspirin in her life. She she don't go to clinic. She she uses her she makes her own Indian medicine to drink and use when something happens you know, to her if she gets a headache or uh, she. She hurts any place. She gets her medicine, her own medicine, and uses it. And that's what she used to tell me. She used to say, "We wocha." She calls me "We wocha." You know, that's a daughter-in-law. You know, and Niaz Anesh Waniaz Akahantas Washichu Washichu Prajutaglana Ichushni. You know. If you're sick or um, headache, don't take this uh, white man's medicine, and take take our medicine that we have, you know. That so you'll live a long time. And she always says, and uh, and so that's what I that's what I <coughs> try to do. The what she teaches and all that. And she's, she's Grandma Annie. Um, I was, she's my in-law, but I used to call her Grandma, Unchi, you know, Unchi Annie. And she's the one that I, I should have listened, but she's the one that was telling me a story about Crazy Horse. Um, she said um, Crazy Horse was in a war uh, battle in between uh, the warriors and the um, cavalry. And uh, I guess a crazy horse was um, had to haul. Um, no, deliver a message in between the uh, the Lakotas. So he had to ride against the uh, where the Calvaries were and the uh, the um, warriors that they were having. Um, battle exchange with guns and um, bow and arrows or whatever and so they told Crazy Horse to deliver a message to the other warriors and he said he he rode um, he rode through um, the uh, battle that we're having and he he laid uh, he leaned against the horse, so they were shooting at him. But he didn't get he didn't um, him and his horse they didn't get uh, hurt or anything. There was no 
guns that hit them, but he made it through that battle. And uh, he had to go deliver a message. So that's what his, um, that's what um, Grandma Annie used to, Unchi Annie used to tell about Crazy Horse being in the running, his, him and his horses running through the battle, but he didn't get shot or nor, um, nor his horse didn't get hurt or shot or hurt or anything. He made it through, through the battle too. And the, Unchi Annie used to talk about that. And she used to say, at those days, the Lakota people were still, you know, they can turn themselves into, into uh, and they can turn invisible, you know. And, uh, they, they're still, you know, holy. They're still Wakan. You know, they can do a lot of things that, you know, that, that they will survive on. Uh, but you, you know, you gotta mean what you're doing, and uh, you know, the, the, the long time ago, the, the ways of the Lakota people. You know, you got to walk that road and, and uh, live like a, a Lakota. You know, so you can have all the um, whatever you do. You you will have the strength and. And uh, you can survive," he, she said. "The surviving is the main main thing in Lakota people. So she, she always talk, go into talking about survival and keep walking in Lakota way. Don't let the Washichus come and teach you this and that. And and then if you, if they do that, you'll forget your own culture. You know." They'll talk you out of your own culture, and that's what she she used to say. Uh, talking about long time ago. Um, I would like to talk about um, uh, Indian medicine, uh, Lakota Prejuta. Uh, my grandma used to tell me that. Uh, there were a couple, couple lived way out in the prairies, and they had a young, young boy, um, a, a young teenager. And where they lived from the north, there was a house there, and there were two, two um, heokas lived there. Heoka, we call them clowns, and, um, and they never hardly come out the door. They're, they're um, hardly you know, outside, uh, out of um, their house. But uh, I guess m uh, these couples, a man and a woman and their son, live so far, so they used to watch them, but They'll come out and kind of run around the house and, you know, chase each other around and around the house and they go back in again and then you don't see them again. So they, they have uh, neighbors, but uh, I guess they, they don't uh, come out of the house, you know, come out of their home all the time. So, you know, they, they uh, the old, the old uh, the couple that lived there and had a, a, a son, I guess he was um, a young man. Uh, one day the young man really got sick. Uh, and uh, he wouldn't eat. So they, uh, the mother cooked him everything that he, w he likes to eat that he would eat any time. But I guess he, he didn't, he couldn't even eat. And pretty soon he, he lost weight and, and lost weight and then, um, and pretty soon he, his um, lips were all dried and, and he couldn't even drink water. So the, the parents, 
don't know. Their parents didn't know what to do. And so they prayed and they, they cooked for him and everything, but he just lie on the bed and he wouldn't move or anything, you know. And, um, and they knew that he was very, very sick at that time. And then, and, um, so <clears throat> the, the woman, um, I guess she, I guess she called herself, uh, um, Omani or uh, walking woman, Omani we. Um, so she went out the door and she she thought she'll go to the neighbor's house see if they got anything or she could talk to them about their son. So she was going. Uh, she she made some uh, little. Uh, she tied up some. Uh, she made a bundle of uh, bread and some other things that she made and took it along with her to offer them. They talk with them. So she, the mother, went, walked over there, and she knocked on the door, and the op the door come open. So she went in, but they just stood there and looked at her, you know, as she walked in. So she told him, "My son's really, my son's very ill, and and he didn't eat for two weeks now, and now." Uh, He's, he's really weak. He wouldn't even move from his bed anymore. So, so um, they looked, at, they, they both looked at each other. And uh, the, one of them just nodded his head like this. And both of them went out the door. And here one went around the, um, the um, right side and the other one went on the left side, they ran around the house and they were picking up things like this, you know, as they were running. They were picking up, you know, certain kind of herbs, you know. They, they were doing that and then they both ran back inside again and um, they had a pot of water there. It's already going, you know, it's already, the stove was going and that water was already kind of boiling like and here they put all those herbs in that pot and um, and that woman was gonna go in here one said uh, one you know uh, touched her and just pointed at where she was standing so, I mean she was standing so again she she just stood where she was standing I mean went back to that same spot and here the herbs was just you know, just fast, she said, just boiled, and then they took a little a little pail of something. Long, long time ago, they had some some kind of a cast iron or stuff like that, you know, or something like that. So they put that um, that water in there, and I guess it, uh, the water looked um, kind of um, yellow. And here with the other one, that they they didn't even say a word. They, they didn't even talk with her or nothing. So, and here the other one that was standing, one was a little bit taller. He come over and he said, "Give him this. Give him this. Uh, make sure he drinks it all." Up. And that's all they said. <laughs> I brought these to you and she gave them she, whatever food she took she gave it to them too so the, they both you know looked at that sack and they were you know pulling it <laughs> pulling on it she'll pull on it and, she, and then this other one will pull on that little um, bundle so she took that medicine and she was going to shake hands with them and here they both turned around so she didn't shake hands with them, they, they, she just walked out. She, she walked home. 
she walked home and uh, she by that time the, the the medicine cooled off so she took a spoon and and she was making them making her son drink that medicine with spoon as much as she can he, but he was still lying there and uh, so they went to bed they watched him they watched him but they you know they went to bed too they they were going to rest and here um they they went to sleep and next morning the husband got up right away and and took off towards his son i wonder how he is he jumped up and he walked towards his son and here there was no one on the bed there was no son on the bed so he told his wife let me ching she to my son my son you know went down he isn't there so so the uh, his wife got up and he she went over there he said ma o omani we she called herself omani we you know walking woman so she went over to that bed where the sun was and here he was missing so they were they went they both went walked outside and they looked around where he can be they even looked up in the roof and they they looked for him but they couldn't find him and here the they had a little dog and here that dog was barking some place so they both ran out the door again here the son that was very ill and couldn't eat or anything he was riding a horse and he was bringing the horses back and and so they watched him but he was coming back and he he brought the on the they had a herd of horses so he brought him back and he got up from his horse and he walked he walked towards the house and he walked in his mother and dad were standing there he walked into the house so the mother cried and hugged her son they both hugged their son I thought you was going to leave us, son. But he smiled and he didn't say a word. Here, he, they had, they, they, uh, there was a plate on the table. And here he ate too, before he left to look for the horses. He, he had food, he ate. And so, my grandmother used to say a long time ago that the heokas, they call them, the clowns. They, they were powerful. They could do anything. Heal people and, you know, play around people, you know. Play around people, you know, they, uh, I don't know what she meant by that, but she said they, they play around people and they can heal. They can, everything they do is backwards. Uh, the clowns, the heokas. So you gotta, you know, if you talk with a clown, you have to. Aheoka, you gotta figure out what he tells you. He he's gonna tell you everything backwards. And um, when they were pulling out those medicine, the the herbs around the house, one 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 went right and one the other one went left. And so that's what my grandmother talks about. They do things the opposite way. But they, they they are powerful. They deal with the thunder people up in, in the lightning. They deal with them. So they are pow very powerful. That's um. So that that day on, the son got healed from that illness he had from those clowns. And, I guess they all had a little ceremony and they invite the clowns, the the uh, heokas, to the outside where they 
they had a little ceremony, but they I guess they come over and they join in, but they, they didn't say much. They feed them, so they went, they left again. Oh, that's, a, that's a story she used to tell about medicine, medicine that, that, that are on the ground, on Unchimakha, uh, you know, uh, Grandmother Earth or Mother Earth, and we don't see it. But those clowns knew what to get, what to pull out and, and heal people. So she always, she always talks about that. And um, and there, uh, she used to tell another one about the um, black deer, t uh, bl uh, um, black-tailed deers, you know, Sintesapla, uh, we called them black-tailed deers. She used to say that um, those deers are, are, they have powers too, like a long time ago. Uh, they couldn't turn themselves into um, men or children or, you know, a woman, you know. They can, they, they can do most anything. And when you look at them, they have a little, a little, some little strips over their face like that, you know, like, so, you know, they look like raccoon, but it's not, look like paint, war paint on a, on a warrior, she always says that. And so, and they are powerful. And one, uh, uh, she used to tell a story on a little girl that wandered off from the camp, and uh, they couldn't find her. They had, um, they looked for her all over, and they blamed the owl, the white owl that flies around the camp, took the little girl. And um, I guess the the warriors went out and looked looked for that little girl all over the place where they where she could be at. She was about about two and a half to three years old. And um, they looked and looked and looked. They they even had a medicine man, you know, um, check the, check the uh, footprints. Um, and by the footprints, they'll, uh, they'll know where she, she'll um, be at, where she walked to and all that. And, um, she said they couldn't find the, the child for at least a, a six months, that long. And here, um, one day, two warriors were um, going, looking for food with bow and arrows. And they, they come up on a little ridge like this. And down there, on over the ridge, there was some trees down to the, uh, as they go down. So they were coming up on a hill, and here they could hear a, a, a child laughing and, you know, like, talking and laughing and and so they were listening they didn't know where it come from so uh, they were but they were climbing up on the hill they just pointed at over the ridge that they just pointed at so they were climbing on that ridge and that just as they peeked over that ridge and here there was a bunch of um, black-tailed deer down there and that little girl was in mixed in with them and uh, one black-tailed deer, um, it's a mother, the mother deer, and uh, some little fawns, and that, that that girl was right with them. So then the warriors got back down and said, that little girl that was missing, she's down there with those. And they both knew, because they've been looking for that little girl. So then they turned around, and they were, one of them, rode back to the camp and told told the parents that the little girl is, you know, way, but it was a long ways where they found him. So the parents, you know, they both got on a horse and they followed this warrior back to the, where um, the, the little girl was seen. And, um, and here when they got close, 
one of the horses made a sound as they were going, so that right away those black-tailed deers, their ears went somehow, and you know they were aware of people coming or you know um, somebody was coming around. So they they both you know they they were. Um, ready to run. So they come over that ridge and here they were all ready to take off. And here that little girl was sure, you know, with those fawns, you know, they were, the, the um, one mother took off with the fawns and here this little girl, you know, went right, right uh, along with them. So they called her, uh, I think the, uh, that little girl's name was Shashangwi. They call her Shashawi. So the the mother called her Shashawi. You know, she she got she was standing up on that ridge. It was really calling her Shashawi. This 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 is Ina. You know, this is your mother. But she wouldn't even look back or nothing. And then the whole herd took off like that. And here she was already on the one with a big um, rack on the, on, the, um, on the head. And here that little girl was sure um, on that um, on that black-tailed deer. She was sitting up on the, uh, in the back already and they don't know how she, they don't know how, you know, she got on there. And she was, uh, she was gone six months, and she should be about almost four years old. And she was on that deer, and just they all took off. And she didn't even, they called her and everything, but she didn't even look back or anything. Look, seemed like she didn't hear them. So they chased them for a while. My grandma said the warriors, the, the, the scouts, you know, they all chased them where the, they took off from a re deep ravine they all took off. So these warriors just followed them, the mother and father too, but I guess they went in that ravine and they just disappeared. They, they disappeared and they, they, they couldn't find out where they went to, and that little girl too. So my grandmother used to say that um, the black-tailed deer are very powerful. And they can do most anything. Uh, so, well, when hunters go out to hunt deers for for their food, I guess when they see a black-tailed de black-tailed deer, they don't they don't shoot at it or anything. They just let it go. They, they wait until they go far away because they can turn them turn into a. a human being, like a man or woman or children. So he said, so my grandma used to say, tell us about black-tailed deer. If we come across one, you know, just pay respect, honor, and walk away, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't try and hurt it, you know, this is, they're powerful. Up to this day, they are still, still powerful. You hardly see them. But if you see one, you have to. You have to walk away, I guess. Yeah, I. I, I would like to talk about the Hamblecha Vision Quest. As I, <clears throat> as I, I grew up. Being um. Being a um. Oh, what well, I explained that my my um, father was a um, oh, Episcopal minister, and my mother helps him. They work together as a team, and so. Uh, but uh, as I grew older, then I got married, and my husband and I found our direction of of uh, Chankuluta, the red road that we both walked in, walked on, and we help each other too. And as I, as I, as we 
go on the red road, we talked to several, because we had dreams, we talked to several um, medicine men that what we can do with our dreams and and how to survive with it. And um, the medicine man tells us that if you have a vision, if you have a dream, you got to fulfill that dream or vision by getting up on a hill and go hablecha, vision quest, for four days or the, the length of time you have to be up there. And uh, he said, even that, you'll know how many days you have to stand up there with your vision. They'll let you know. The grandfathers will let you know. The spirits will let you know, tell you all this. So when you get up there and fulfill your vision or dream, then you come down and the, the grandfathers are happy about it. And then they'll they'll continue on. There's no end to it. When you have that, when you're done with your hablecha, then you go on another step. They'll tell you what to do next. So you go in inipi, uh, uh, sweat, and um, and maybe you'll get a, you'll get more uh, dreams about your. Um, about to do the things they're, they're trying to tell you. So, um, so then that's how we got started. And I think a lot of us Lakota people, you know, that's how we got started. It's our own dreams, our own vision from the Lakota people uh, that we have to respect and do what the grandfathers are, 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 are giving us to do by dreams and visions. And then, and then you go to ceremonies, ceremonies that you tell your dreams, and there's a little ceremony with that. And uh, when you get done with everything, then you do a wopila. Uh, you do a Thanksgiving with the Tugashlas, the uh, the grandfathers, and then and then when you you prepared yourself or they tell you what to do, you prepare yourself to do what you have to do from then on. I know there's a Chanupa, a uh, uh, Chanupa Wakha, a sacred pipe that was brought to us by the calf pipe woman to to live and survive with that chanupa, make peace with everyone and uh, walk in a humble way. But uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to, it's hard, very hard, because a lot of us go so far and we turned around. We don't go walk on that red road, straight road, we turn around half ways or fall, fall alongside the road, the red road. And uh, we get weak, but other than that, we have to, uh, the praying, the praying is uh, very important. We have to pray day, day and night for we have to thank the Tunkashlas, what they give us during that day, the, during the day and at night, and they watch over us. So we have to say a wopila, a thank you. And, and uh, it's, um, it's a very, very hard. A lot of them say it's very hard to be a Indian, Lakota, especially walking in a traditional way because you have to go through a lot of things that the grandfathers have showed us long time ago. We have to keep that in our hearts and in our mind. So
So these um, inipi and hamblechea, we wang wachipi. Uh, vision quest and um, sweats and um, sun dancing. Those are very, very important to us Lakota people. And and that's that's around the world that Lakota people, not only here, but there's Lakota people around the world. And and we have to look look out for each other and share our visions, share our dreams so we can have we can um have um strong feelings towards the towards all the um Ikjawichashas, the common men. And and especially now we think about what's going on on this um on in these communities. Uh, we think about the, our children and uh, we have to teach our children these these um cultural um ways of living so they can also survive as they grow up and if they have families they'll share these things with the with the uh, um the Lakota ways I know it's very very hard now but uh Chanupa the calf pipe woman brought us this sacred pipe and we have to lean on it now everything's getting hard everything's everything is it seems like turning the other way and uh as Lakota people, we have to learn how to survive, so we have to uh, uh, think about our children, our elderlies, our elders, uh, and uh, and st stand together as the uh, as we come to these times of suffering and and. Uh, uh, so we can have a circle, Ikjeri uh, Chasha circle, uh, so we can all stand together in that circle. When we when they have a sun dance, that's what that's what they do. There's a Hochukabwakhan we call it. In the middle, there's a Hochukabwakhan. So all the sun dancers get in there and pray. Uh, it it uh, helps us. It, it helps everybody think that uh, we have to be strong. We have to we have to stand up for our our um, the pipe that the sacred pipe that the the young uh, maiden brought to us. And, uh, but uh, a lot of us don't think think that way. We just. Uh, dance at that sun dance, and then you know uh, the the next day when we get done with our four days, then we kind of slack slack away from the praying and and uh, walk uh, the way we should on a on a red road, Chakuluta. So I uh, I'll I I teach my grandchildren here how to sing the four direction song and pray. And, uh, so when we get together, we do all that, and uh, they, they, uh, it's really good because they all say, "Grandma, let's sing that Four Directions song again." You know, they remind me of it, remind me that you know there is. And then I teach them other songs, but uh, it's gonna take a while for them to learn. So I'm, I'm just, you uh, know, not only my grandchildren. Whoever wants to learn these sacred songs of sweats and uh, healing songs and prayer songs, you know, we have to share those to our younger generation. So as they walk, grow up, you know, they'll have they'll have something to they'll have these to these songs to sing and help other people too, praying and so just um. 
I just want to say that, you know, um, the children of, of today should look to, towards the Red Road and, and learn, learn their own cultural culture so they, they will be strong and, and they'll have a surviving mind as they grow older. And that's, uh, that's what I wanted to say. And I know there's a lot of elders that have have um, good advice towards children too, for uh, being a Lakota and have to walk this Lakota road. Chanku Chanku Luta, he ogna moni pikta. As unkiya picha wa onsh akapikta hecha. Unkiya cha taku chunk upilana waste chunk upihantas. Wakhaja unkit hapki isa el el hiupi na wain kapi na isa okach ni kapi te chenke chenke ya tohans na oas taku ge shichas lecha ke ke wacheki ap tohans na ke taku ge ha kot ha el iya chenke hanke wopi la hecha chenke ya he ha wana. Taku pro hena wana miglustas leja. Hey, 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 hey,